Welcome to the absolute craziness that is my life. At the time I'm making this video, I have about two weeks to get this boat ready to go into the water. Before that day, I have to finish everything that's below the waterline, or that will be impossible to work on once the boat is in the water. Obviously, this includes everything that's on the outside bottom of the hull, such as various paint jobs, most recently the anti-fouling, but also some elements that are necessary for safe maneuvering and stable cruising of the boat. We have of course my by now infamous transoms for two outboard motors, together with everything that's needed for steering and controlling the motors. I will also need to build a helm from where to steer the boat, and we definitely need an anchor. Except for the transoms and paint jobs, I haven't really started working on any of these elements. The one thing I've been quite busy with, however, is the new bow thruster. So today, let's start with that. Recently, I showed you how I cut a hole into the hull to fit the bow thruster. So let's take it up from there. Here, I first need to remove some parts of that fin. I'm gonna shape the fin to a more pleasing form. Next I'm gonna drill some holes into the disc I made for the stern adapter. For this I got a spiral drill bit that fits into my magnetic core drill. Now this drill bit doesn't have a hole in the center, so I'm gonna have to lubricate the cut manually. Let's see if all the bolts fit, and they do. For welding the disc into the hull, I invited a welder friend, because I didn't dare to do it myself. I later came to regret this decision, but more on that in a moment. The welder first welded the two pieces of the disc together. On the inside, he did a pretty good job. On the outside I found the welds to be a little bit thick, but the guy assured me that the welds are going to hold. Now we can fit the disc into the hull. I attach the stern adapter to make sure it's in the right position. Once we are confident that everything is aligned properly, the welder welds it in place. First from the outside, and then from the inside.
Looking at the result, he really did a good job on the inside. I really can't complain here. On the outside, however, certain things seem to have gone wrong. Now, I don't want to diss the guy. After all, I'm the one who hired him. All I can say is that he seemed a bit in a rush to finish the job and the result shows it. Now my initial plan was to practice my welding and then do it myself. But for some reason I lacked the confidence in myself and ended up outsourcing the job. Well, lesson learned. Needless to say, I wasn't happy with the result and went ahead and ground away the ugly welds. With the plan to put better ones on top, I put up a wind cover around the area to remove at least one source of difficulties. I set the welder to a little less than maximum with the wire speed at a minimum. And with that, let's do it. To prevent the weld pool from getting too hot and dripping down, I only place a single bead at a time, let it cool down for a second or two and then place the next bead on top. While working here, I quickly realized that one of the reasons the other welder had such a hard time was probably because of the awkward position we were in, crouched under the sloped hull, the welding helmet pressed against the hull, your knees getting shaky, the wind blowing from outside and inside the boat. Under these difficult conditions, it's quite easy to lose control over your welding. Now with these thick welds placed on top of the previous ones, I could now sleep calmly knowing that the disc is not only watertight, but also very robust. Next I put down a layer of rust converter, first on the outside, and then on the inside. Here I noticed some deep craters in the steel, which I plan to fix. While knowing that this is not the proper way, I went ahead and filled them up with some welds, ground it off and hope for the best. Next came a coat of primer and then the good old Danboline bilge paint. Right when I finished the last coat of bilge paint, I realized that I had completely forgotten to add the reinforcements to the border of the disc, which is the reason why I let it stick out so far from the hull. So I cut six little triangles and went ahead with the messy task of welding them in place after the paint had already been applied. Alright, now it's time to attach the stern adapter permanently. First, another quick little test to see if everything is aligned properly. I put a thin layer of Overtroll oil on the bottom part of the ring. Next, I'm gonna test and compare two different sealants to see which one is better suited for this application. The 591, which is presumably for marine application, seems to be softer much more flexible than the 554. The 554, being much stiffer and thus probably tougher, seems to be the better choice in my estimation. I roughen up the flange of the stern adapter to allow for a better adhesion. I wipe everything clean with acetone and a paper towel. The flange has a set of grooves where the adhesive can fit in. Now I can mount the stern adapter, making sure to tighten the bolts not too much to avoid squeezing out too much of the adhesive, then coming back a day or two later to tighten the bolts firmly. Next I can install the leg of the bow thruster. On the inside I'll install the motor mount
Next it's time to paint the stern adapter, first with a coat of primer and then with a coat of anti-fouling. Now I can install that heavy motor comes with a huge 250 amp fuse and a battery isolator. I've quickly prepared a little piece of wood where to install them and then this can go into the boat. For a first test I'm gonna use this little 24 volt battery bank. I got my friends over at Filippi to send over some thick wires and then I prepare the wires. Now I can wire everything up. And then we can go for a little test. Alright, so we got a light and a beep. That's always a good sign, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work. I'm currently in touch with Max Power's technical support and I hope to get it to work in the coming day. Now full disclosure, I did make a mistake wiring it up because the diagram they sent me was a little bit unclear and I glanced over it too quickly I guess, but even after fixing that it didn't work. Maybe I blew something up, I don't know, but I'll let you know in the next video. Next we'll continue working on the transoms, where you may remember that my initial design had a couple of issues. For one, the position of the motor is way too close to the boat, so that it's impossible to tilt them upwards. For another, the height of the transom is way too low, especially if later on, when the boat becomes heavier, the waterline will move further upwards. I'll start by drilling a few more holes further up the H-beams, to allow the transom to be mounted higher. First into the H-beams that are welded onto the boat, and then into the loose ones. And here once again, I have to do this with such precision that all the drill holes fit, no matter at which height I mount the transoms. And to give you a little demonstration, Next I built this little contraption here to determine the right distance between the transoms and the boat in order for the motors to be able to be tilted upwards. I got a set of identical short H-beams which I plan to weld together with some heavy duty steel square tubes. First I need to cut up the tubes with various 45 degree angles to make them fit diagonally in between the two H-beams. I have a total of 4 brackets for the H-beams, so I need to cut 4 of these diagonal square tubes. Next I prepare all the parts for welding. I align everything as best as possible. And then I weld it together, first with a few tech welds. I mount the parts to the boat to see if everything looks alright so far. Next I'm gonna cut more steel square tubes to finish up the brackets for the transoms. I recently got an electric bandsaw and so here I'm trying how that goes. But in the end I prefer to stick to my angle grinder. With all the tubes cut, I can proceed to welding them in place. Now welding those parts is not a joke, because in the end, the motors will be held only by those pieces. This means 
that once everything is put together, the only thing that will prevent the motors from falling off and into the water is something that I built. That's why I really try my best, taking great care in preparing the material for welding, heating up the material beforehand, doing dry runs to get familiar with the terrain and then focusing all my attention on the weld itself. Overall, I'm very happy with how these turned out. The majority of the welds are rather clean. For the most part, I was able to do a straight, uninterrupted weld. Whenever the gap was a bit wider, I had to do individual beads. In very few places, I got these holes in the welds probably from air blowing through the tubes from the inside. But all in all, I will file this under good job, well done. Now I can mount the brackets to see what it's gonna look like. And right away, I can tell that there's gonna be quite some lever force pulling at those H-beams. So in order to prevent the whole thing from being ripped out by the weight of the motors, I decide to bolt the upper part of the frame directly to the hull. For this, I got a core drill long enough to drill through both walls of the square tube. Once the hole is done through the tube, I have to drill a hole into the hull. Next I'm gonna repeat this another four times, hopefully making the transoms stable enough for the load they're gonna have to bear. Next I apply very sophisticated methods to create another set of exactly identical brackets for the second transom. All the brackets are now welded to completion, so let's move on. I'm gonna attach the first two brackets one more time onto the boat. Because now I have to drill the holes for the transom plate one more time. With the transom plate in place, I realize that now the entire structure is only held by the web of the H-beam on either side and thus prone to shaking heavily, as you can see here. I'm gonna have to add some reinforcements to the H-beams to counter this effect. This of course is a perfect job for the plasma cutter. These are now ready to go and I think it should be sufficient if I place one reinforcement on either side of the web for each H-beam. I drilled the holes for bolting the motor to the transom first into the wooden plate then into the steel transom plates. I also made a second set of steel transom plates for the second transom. By the way, this whole business of making doubles and quadruples of everything is really starting to get to me at this point. I remember some viewers posting comments that I should have put a single larger engine rather than two smaller engines. Yeah, I thought about that a lot while doing these works. 
Anyway, let's move on to painting the brackets. First with a layer of rust converter, then with the same paint that we used for the hull of the boat. The structure on the boat has also been painted completely in the meantime. Next I'm going to cut off the overhanging bits of the H-beams that are welded onto the boat. For this I thought I would give it a try with the new bandsaw and this worked surprisingly well. Unbelievably well in fact. I was able to cut all four H-beams in about an hour. The only difficulty with this is that it's pretty hard to see where the cut is going and you need to hold the device at the right angle throughout the entire cut, otherwise the blade can get pinched in. But overall, I couldn't think of a faster and easier device to cut these big H-beams. Next I clean up the sharp edges. And here too, I weld in some reinforcements. And with this, the part of the transom that's attached to the boat is completely finished. I'm really happy about those 5 M16 bolts as a backup in case any of the welds were to come loose. Now I can put the brackets back in place, hopefully for the last time. And in case you wonder, I use washers, locking washers and self-securing nuts on pretty much all the bolts. After painting the transom plates, I can put those in place. I didn't quite manage to finish the wooden board for the second one, so I hope you can forgive me on that. And so now, feast your eyes on my monster transoms. Over two months in the making, they are now about 95% finished. I still need to add some plates to make them more hydrodynamic, and probably once we install the motors, a few other things will come up. But for the time being, I'm really satisfied with the result and can't wait to put those motors on there. Remember to check out Fishing Clash and benefit from their one-time offer for new players.